Hey everybody, I'm your guide Ryan, and whether it's your first time in Gig Harbor or your hundredth, Sun RV Resorts and I wanted to take a minute to give you a brief introduction to the unique culture of this beautiful seaside village you find yourself in today. This area has attracted inhabitants for thousands of years, both because of the gorgeousness of its location, as well as its abundance of food, whether that was roots, berries, and crops, or fish and chips. The earliest inhabitants of Gig Harbor included the Nisqually, Squamish, and Puyallup tribes. But the town didn't receive her modern moniker until 1841, when the U.S. Navy's exploring expedition arrived, led by Lieutenant Charles Wilkes, who found that the entrance to the harbor was so narrow that his primary ship couldn't fit in, and instead, he had to explore in the captain's gig. Now, because Gig Harbor is on a peninsula, that means it's 90 miles to get from Gig Harbor to Tacoma, which is right across the Narrows. So for centuries, you had to take boats to get anywhere. It was a popular date around the turn of the 20th century to row across to Tacoma, get an ice cream sundae with your sweetheart, and then have to row back. But all of this was gonna change in the 20th century with the construction of the very long, very impressive Tacoma Narrows Bridge. And when it opened in 1940, it was the third longest suspension bridge in the world after the Golden Gate Bridge and the George Washington. Almost immediately, commuters began to notice that the bridge would buck like a Bronco in strong winds, and snarky locals began using the nickname Galloping Gertie. Finally, on November 7th, 1940, Gertie began twisting from side to side and the drivers knew it was time to escape. Thankfully, there were no human casualties. The only victims were several dozen vehicles and one unlucky dog. As you can see, the calamity was captured on film and has thrilled both rubberneckers and civil engineers ever since. Reconstruction had to wait until after World War II was finished, but finally, when the new bridge opened in 1950, it was so strong that it was nicknamed Sturdy Gertie, and that's the bridge that still stands today. The Gig Harbor would be nothing without her people. And one great place to learn about them is here at the Harbor History Museum. One of my favorites is Clarence Shaw, community booster, businessman, and local icon, who in the 1930s started his famous rooster races. Now Shaw, who had grown up on a farm in Nebraska, wanted to find a way to bring crowds back to downtown Gig Harbor, so he advertised cash prizes for first and second place winners in the rooster races. And soon enough, they were appearing at Madison Square Garden and then in a movie tone newsreel, which put Gig Harbor on the map for over 50 million people worldwide. And tourists showed up for the novelty, but then stayed for the area's natural beauty. In fact, it's the natural beauty of this area that inspired a young cartoonist named Gary Larson to start a comic strip called The Far Side. When Larson was just a kid, he used to visit his grandparents who lived here on nearby Fox Island, which is just across the bridge from Gig Harbor. Now, Larson used to play in the swamps and estuaries of Fox Island, discovering salamanders, snakes, spiders, and you have to assume writing little monologues for them, which eventually culminated in him starting The Far Side in 1979. It ran through 1995 and is still anthologized and loved to this day, especially in science laboratories. We hope you enjoyed yourselves taking a little mini tour of Gig Harbor, Washington with us, and maybe we even inspired you to get out and do a little bit of exploring on your own. For Sun RV Resorts, I've been your guide, Ryan. We hope you're having a comfortable, memorable, and fun time here at Gig Harbor RV Resort. We'll see you next time, and thanks for watching. It's crazy, right? Super weird. Yeah, be honest. Super weird, right?